This video is brought to you by the Crazy Aquarium Guy. Welcome, fish lovers, to Sax Tax, Crazy Aquarium Guy. Um, a lot of things happened uh, during the extreme summer we had in Sweden, and one of the things was I got big problems in my rainbow tank. I'm, got, I'm not gonna go into that in this video, but if you wanna know what happened, I have two, like two videos ago, I talked about what happened. And I talked a little bit about it in the last five videos, I think. So, I'm not gonna do that too much, but I'm gonna show you, because we tried to do um, no fertilizer, no CO2, uh, heavily planted aquarium, so I'm gonna show you a picture when it looked amazing. And of course, uh, when you do meds, which I really, I did a lot of them, I nuked this tank when my rainbows got sick, so a lot of the plants don't like meds. Let's just say that. So, new plan for this tank now, we're gonna go into it, but I'm gonna show you, like I said, a picture when it looks the best. And we got that, almost got that complete carpet just T5 lighting, it's not even LED, so I still think that T5s are really good, but it's more expensive in the long run and you don't have as much options uh, with spectrum and things, but it's kind of fun that you can change uh, for nature and uh, uh, you can change the Kelvin and you, yeah, you can do a lot of things with T5 still and they are really strong and plants really love them. But I have most LEDs in my fish room and I really like the spectrum and the colors uh, of LED lights but this is still T5. So let's feed the tank and talk about my new plan with this tank. I think I will make it to an extreme, uh, extremely big guppy colony <laughs> because it's a lot of fun and I love guppies. So let's get into it. So this is the tank now guys, I put in about 150 guppies and you know I have a breeding for profit tank and instead of selling them I've been putting them in this tank. I haven't been putting them, it was like 200 at one time and I took out 150 and put them in here. And yeah it felt like I had a bunch of rainbows for a long time and I love them and it takes so long for them to grow up. So I was like, should I add more, uh, should I buy new rainbows and then add them? But that's gonna be the same thing. Should I buy some other things? Um, I played with the idea of putting the angels that I bought some time ago in here. But I realized I really like guppies. Why not try them in a big aquarium? And the problem with big aquariums, obviously, is that we have two FX6 filters one over there, one over there. And they're gonna swallow a bunch of fry. And besides the fact that the rainbows are always hungry and super quick, so they are gonna munch on the fry as well. But I have a uh, separate 50 gallon breeding for guppies, breeding guppies for profit tank. So even if the fry don't make it in here, I can still add new guppies from that tank. And obviously it's not good to just add from another aquarium, but most of my aquariums, uh, especially those two, are the same water parameters. And I still change water with the python. I mean I have two, so if fish are sick, of course I use one for just that tank and don't spread it to all the other aquariums. But at a certain point it's not so much you can do, um, you can just spread things between aquariums with your arms or uh, with a fish net. Uh, it's really hard to not do that sometimes. Uh, if you ever got the problem in your fish room with ick, that's the worst one. That can easily spread with just water and you carrying it on your skin. Um, a long time ago I had problems with ick but it can be the same with parasites and that's even harder because you can you don't have to it can be hard to know if you even have parasites in aquarium sometimes uh, one fish can carry it and doesn't show on the body and another fish can really get a lot of 
weird things on the body and uh, die from it. While the other fish is still uh, fine for another year and then it suddenly pops up. So, and as you can see, we had that carpet, that's, what I, that's why I was talking about that and these red plants really took a beating, the mini Reneki. And my carpet was that Quadrocostatus, I always forget the name of that one, but ask me again if, in the comment section if you want to know. Uh, so I took that out and I took a bunch of uh, Dwarf Sagittaria out because I wanted more uh, white sand. I tried to heavily plant it and as you saw in the picture it was pretty much heavily planted. But all the plants took a beating uh, of the meds of course. But the new plan for this tank now is not to buy more rainbows and not to add more rainbows. Uh, but to increase the amount of guppies we have in here. I really want this tank to be like 500 guppies. Because I think they look amazing. They are easy to feed, they are always happy and... Ah. It's a... Yeah, it's a really nice fish to keep. Even though it's a beginner fish. I think the guppy isn't really a beginner fish anymore because it's been people have been breeding it so hard so it, it's not as hardy as it used to be yeah um, what else yeah we have actually started to uh, fertilize this tank to get it back to its former prime if you will and what I've been using is Easy Life Iron and Easy Life Profito, Profito, and it's just to get them back because, like I said, they took a really hard beating. I'm gonna do. I wanted these plants were almost completely wiped out so they've been coming back with the iron and it's just it's it's good to fertilize your aquarium but the plan from the beginning with this tank was just to show people that you don't have to but I don't feed as much anymore like I did in this tank because the rainbows when I had like 35 I have 70 Corridoras and obviously it's really hard to know if I still have 70 Corridoras because they are never out together and I don't know how many I lost when I lost the rainbows and nuked the tank but it's at least 50 still because sometimes when I feed frozen foods so many come out so it has to be at least 50 but I had 70 at one, one point so I haven't done a video about this tank in a while because it's been hard for me to yeah like I said go back and watch the video of horrible stuff that happened in my fish room video it's not a lot of fun but if you want to know more in depth everything that happened in a short period of time when I started to work in another city look at that one but now it's new beginning and we're gonna look forward to making this a super guppy tank instead it's gonna be hard for the fry to survive with the rainbows but if we can add guppies from the other tank. So we're gonna feed this tank. I'm just gonna show you quick this potus plant and probably this plant has been growing even better. This plant doesn't like meds either by the way but since the roots are in the water, I've been tying them together three or four times, otherwise they would take up half the tank. But the water roots are also loving the fertilizer, so this looks amazing. Doesn't come out very good on camera, but it looks amazing in real life. Maybe I should do, show you from a distance, just quick, then we're gonna feed the tank. So. It's, of course, that is also helping with the water quality. Um, yeah, we're gonna feed them some brine shrimp, frozen artemia. I think frozen artemia is the best frozen food. If you can only feed one type of food, 
frozen food, I would feed frozen artemia. It's easily the best one. And I put some tank water in a container and melt it. I don't do that all the time, but I try to do that once a week because all the corridoras, I want the food to get stuck into leaves and crooks and crannies and so all the corridors can come out later and eat it. And you can also turn the filters off when you do this. I do that sometimes. But now we're doing a video so I'm not gonna turn three filters off. But sometimes I do that when I do heavy feeding with frozen foods. It's no use to having a third of the food going into the filters. I mean, the same with the Denison barbs. Um, they also took a beating. Some of them started to be crooked. That was weird, because that shouldn't be the parasites, but I don't know. So much weird things going on with this tank this summer and in the fall as well. But you saw the picture, I think that was late May or something. So it happened quick when it happened. some more and we know the corridoras like their meat because they usually don't come out a lot when the lights are bombing on like this and all the fish are feeding and munching but the cheaper kinds if you say that corridoras uh, are more outgoing and the more beautiful expensive ones they are always hiding so that's the thing I should have thought about when I bought like 70 I should have bought 70 of one kind and probably should have gone with the bronze regular one or something or just panda corridoras that would be more expensive of course but some some of them that are more outgoing because a lot of the kinds I have in here I think I have five different ones they are not out they are out during the night and you know how they are, swimming against the glass, uh, acting all funny, but when the lights in the middle of the day are on like this, nope, they're not coming out. But they sure like uh, that I have more open spaces with sand, because the corridors love their sand to filter through and dig out and search for food, so the carpet wasn't really a good idea when you have 70 corridors either. So I'm happy with it, but of course it looked better. But we're gonna go back. We're gonna come back to that good looks, but it's gonna take some time. If you do meds for like two months straight and three different ones, uh, the plants are gonna notice and they are gonna get more algae and get more brown and hold in the leaves and stuff like that. So. So much you can do about that. Yeah. So I probably have a bunch of questions, especially if you're new to the channel. Um, I can answer them in the comment section, so just ask me in there. And see you in the next video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.